Are we right? Yes, we're right. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Aradna Tiwari from Be The Change, the founder of the page Be The Change and uh, an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator and an Empathy Coach. Here to have my talk show today and I have an amazing guest. I will be introducing you my guest in a bit and meanwhile, people who are joining us for the first time. Uh, what is this Be The Change show? Be The Change show, a uh, talk show is actually inviting people from all various facets of life where um, you know, people have the courage to follow their heart, to know and to share what they know and how following their knowing they have actually created change in the world. So this really is an invitation for me as, and I guess it's an invitation for all of us to actually follow our heart, our knowing, because we all are special in our own ways. And we are, um, we've been uh, coming here on the planet Earth with some special gifts, but we haven't been acknowledging because we think we are misfits and we are trying to fit with people. But these are some courageous people, the celebrities of their own life who had the courage and did not uh, doubt their knowing and had followed their heart and uh, and making a change on the planet just by being and they don't have to really do something so and i'm very lucky that i have uh, so many amazing guests each week and how they say yes to be here and share their journey with us and today i have an amazing amazing friend of mine vicky baby Vicky is an accomplished chartered accountant, owner, director of PS Baby Group, and has achieved professional success in providing innovative solutions, establish abiding relationship across the globe. More interestingly, he completed his solo cyclothon of 2,800 kilometers in 14 days, which he covered in his efforts to step away from his comfort zone to push his mind and body to its limit in order to raise funds for cancer patients. He is determined to celebrate his 64th birthday on November 18th, which he probably shares with me, cycling for grit for life, the funds raised from which would go directly to BCP, BF Cancer Foundation. So I'm welcoming the rock star Vicky Bailey here. Vicky, can I have you online, please? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for saying yes and thank you. Welcome to the show. How did this show get so lucky to have a rock star like you? Yeah, and yeah. you have always amazed me and surprised me. So first of all, let me correct you what you just said that uh, 2,800 kilometers. I haven't started and I haven't done those. Uh, that's what I'm going to start on the 18th of November. What I've done is the practice for that uh, journey. And for that, I've already done 6,500 kilometers of my training. And we'll be doing another 1,500 kilometers over the next 30 days. The deadline is now 30 days from now, from today. Uh, so I start on the 18th of November. That's our, we share our birthday. The yeah. day I get to be 64, double your age. <laughs> you, I think I, I get to shame and I know that I'm like you there. And like, I'm still not doing something. What, how amazingly you were creating. And I think I get so much of spirit. I'm like, if you are, you can do it, I can do it too. And I remember following you on the track and how you slowly and steadily kept going and never stopped. And you gave me your techniques. Every time I track, I always follow that. And I always remember you on the track. And thank you for all your um, inputs. That was an amazing track uh, where I had a lot of doubt in my, on my in myself. And I, I think I went to uh, Maninder uh, probably four or five times to ask him. I said, I'm 60 years old. You know, do you think I can do this? Because uh, he said everybody else is much, much younger. With Chandini being the youngest, I think she was just in her early 20s. And I was the oldest. And he kept saying that, yes, you can do it. So that's what uh, we did. That's and you did it pretty really well. Okay. I think you did the top of the track, how slowly. Yeah, and I don't know how the track or not, but yes, I did complete it. So that was good. I felt uh, good. And I think you gave me the courage to complete it because I think I was doing on it. We were giving, uh, nudging each other and sort of motivating each other to do it. So that, you know, your first time, my first time, and that was a good time, good, good journey. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. And um, yeah, I would come to your cyclothon for sure. And I'm sorry that I actually was also when reading about that, that you still have to do it. But yes, we'll come to that a little later. Would really like to start because you have uh, genealogy of Guru Nanak Ji, which is like, I've grown up with Guru Nanak Ji. And it's like, for me, he's my friend. I've never seen him as a guru. I have always only heard about him from my grandfather. 
I only believed in him and only, I think for him, me, it's him, everything. And I'm so proud and I'm so excited to know. And I've always been excited when you told me that you have your genes coming from the humanity. And I'm definitely, there is a link there. So could you let us know what is your whole story starting from there and then we'll follow further. So, uh, you know, Guru Nanak, I'm uh, the 14th descendant of Guru Nanak. Wow. Wow. And if you count uh, Guru Nanak as number one, then I'm called the 15th PD of Guru Nanak. So all the babies come, you know, are, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, the generations of Guru Nanak. And we come from a town called Dera Baba Nanak, which was in uh, news uh, last year because uh, the governments of India and Pakistan allowed uh, the corridor from Dera Baba Nanak to another uh, Gurdwara in Pakistan, which is Kartarpur Sahib, for people to go through. And in Dera Baba Nanak, we are called as the Kilewala Bedis because the treasury and, you know, of the olden times was to be in our, uh, uh, you know, the, the Kila was supposed to be the home of uh, my family. So, but, you know, I've been away from there. I have, you know, I mean, my, my father, of course, was there uh, before partition. I mean, till the partition and then they moved to in Delhi. I'm a Delhiite. I was born and brought up in Delhi. Uh, my fa my family, larger family, runs a foundation called Bedi Foundation, which is in the name of, you know, which is all the Kilewala Bedis, uh, which is, uh, you know, the leadership for that is my eldest cousin, uh, who's called the Tikka in the family. The, the eldest grandson of the family is called the Tikka and all the other uh, children, you know, all the other uh, grandsons are called Kavar, so he's the Tikka. He leads the entire organization and my eldest brother supports him in his in the entire management. So they are doing the job where we do a lot of Langar Seva, a lot of other, uh, uh, you know, activities relating to charity and social good. So you mean you got all your genes from there and that is what, what you're doing it? That is when you, the miracle you are? Well, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very proud to be... Uh, you know, a descendant of Guru Nanak, and I think uh, it stops me from doing some of the things that uh, uh, I would have otherwise done. Uh, you know, and uh, so uh, so that is one part of it. And I think uh, you know the principles that he has laid down uh, are something which is very very close to me: uh, Kirat Karna, Van Chakna, and Nam Japna, which is uh, you know the three pillars of uh, of what Guru Nanak said. And then of course the equality and the oneness. And uh, those factors for the people who don't get that. Sorry. So, can you please explain a bit about those three things that you follow? Oh. The kid is, uh, you know, you must work for your living, and you should uh, do, uh, you know. So that's why you possibly don't see beggars. Seek beggars. Uh, one chakna is whatever you earn from your living, you should share with society. And nam japna is in the sense that whatever you do, you do it in the name of the Lord and keeping the Lord in. Uh, your uh, mind. So logically, when you do that, you uh, don't do something bad. So, and another thing is that there is a belief in the Sikhs that uh, uh, till the Langar Seva continues, uh, the Sikhs will never go hungry because they are giving more, you know, giving out. So there is, this, you know, this this concept of Langar has continued since then, and uh, it is said that even during the wars, when the Sikhs were uh, at war with the enemies. Uh, at the end of the day, the Sikhs would call out to the, you know, to anybody and everybody. And if the enemies also wanted to come and eat langar, they would come and be allowed to eat langar over there. So that's wow. why you find that uh, every Gurdwara has a langar seva, which is uh, for distribution of food. And, uh, and so, so that is, and the other uh, thing that draws me very, you know, which I feel very good about is the concept of oneness, which he said, Ekonkar, there's only one, uh, you know, whatever you may call it, the force, the energy, God, and whatever name you want to give, that is your choice. But for all living beings, there is only one uh, Supreme. And uh, then the equality of all human beings, uh, equality of, for women and other aspects. You know, so that is, is something which is very important. And I think that is one of the biggest uh, uh, reasons that uh, I'm wanting to do this uh, cyclothon, because I feel there are people who are getting deprived and they don't, uh, shouldn't be doing that. You know, they shouldn't. And I, I mean, I went through and, and you know, we we'll probably talk about it later when I'll tell you exactly why I decided to do the cycle. cycle. So you've also done a kind of a cyclo 
cycling to dera town right no so dera baba nanak dera baba nanak when i turned 60 uh, you know i it, i woke up one day and i said i'm going to i'm going to cycle to dera baba nanak because that's where my father came from you know and uh, i didn't even have a bicycle i'm not a cyclist i am an amateur i borrowed bicycles and i decided to do that and i did that so i went to delhi delhi to amritsar and then to dera baba nanak Uh, did that in three days, so that average about 190 kilometers a day. And in the last section between Amritsar and uh, Dera Baba Nanak, my younger son flew in from the U from the US, and he joined me. And we went uh, there, and we saw our old house, which is of course broken down now. And uh, so the foundation is trying to get it back into into some shape, and to then run a charitable uh, institution over there. Wow. So, what actually brings you? Because as much as I know you, I have always seen you up and about, and that was thrill of just like you know, like you picked up the cycle and you started going. So, what is it that that brings all that courage and that whole adventure in you? What 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 actually really motivates you? So, what you just said a little while ago, you know, if you can do it, then I can do it, and so that is a very big driver. It's just that I have to learn how to do it. Uh, and then obviously we all have uh, interest i may not have an interest in what you are doing but it's not that i cannot do it i can do anything and everything that anybody else in this world can do it it's just that i have to be trained in it and uh, as i was um, uh, growing up i've always uh, tried to do a little bit of adventure here and there so when my kids were growing up i didn't want them to be fearful about things uh, i was scared of heights by the way and uh, when we were in new zealand uh, i decided that uh, they should you know they should be doing bungee jumping and skydiving and i was shit scared and obviously i couldn't i couldn't uh, stay back and they would be doing it so i had to do it so it was a very good experience and uh, so i went did up doing a lot of things which otherwise i would not have done and i felt very good about it and uh, and and this cycling trip was uh, something to test myself that i i become 60 and i need to do something and that was also the secondary the after that i decided to go for the trek because uh, there was a trek to a fairly uh, high altitude i didn't know whether my lungs would hold on whether i would be able to do that but i think uh, maninder was very uh, motivating and he said i can do it and i ended up doing it you know and uh, nothing i mean it it just came into my mind i just did it so it all started with a gut feel nothing really so you just started much later in life all these adventure activity activities or were you in earlier also no, i mean you know i've been a motorcyclist all my life so from that point of view uh, adventure was a part of uh, me uh, but yes uh, you know uh, everything that kids would have wanted to do uh, rafting or anything any adventure sport was something that just came naturally and it was never a no no uh for my children and my family my wife is a very supportive person and uh, so she was she has been a part of it uh, some places she's not been allowed to do because of medical reasons but she's been a part of it every time and very motivating to that extent and uh, so it's it's just been a part of me really uh if you like you've been into all those adventures into the spaces and places what do you what do you think life is all about how how do you get that courage how like a lot of people don't have so what actually comes i just wanted to like you to share those aspects where actually i know it's uh, we just do it but what actually brings that to you like if you been to trekking if you been to cycling like and you know just take a cycle and people would be scared my family my this i have to take it so what happens something happens or not happens how do you go over them so first of all i think everybody around me is obviously very scared because i keep these, taking these decisions uh, which alarm which are very alarming to them uh, if you talk to my mom she'd say you're you're mad why are you doing it uh, my wife also would have uh, doubts on it but then uh, i probably don't listen to anybody uh, you know so once i have it in my mind uh, and i feel confident about it but i'm not brash i'm not rash and i'm not uh, Uh, doing some things just for the sake of doing things without uh, so even uh, uh, even this this cyclothon that i'm doing uh, once i decided uh, i've gone through a full medical check up even beyond the normal uh, checks that would have been done 
uh, I went through them to make sure that uh, I, I, there's no medical problem with me. And once the doctors confirmed, only thereafter did I decide that I'm going to do it because the original plan that I had was to cycle actually from Leh, uh, which was again going to be high altitude. I would have passed uh, five mountain passes, which would have been higher than 16,500 feet. Uh, but that didn't happen because of the pandemic. So uh, the answer to you would be that uh, it's, it's just gut feel. It's very spontaneous. Uh, most of my decisions are very spontaneous, I would say. So when you do them, uh, do at any given point of time, do you lose your heart? Do you think it's tough? You cannot do it. And you've got into like maybe the trekking, the cycling or any adventure activity. And do you have to push yourself at those moments there or it's very easy for you? So, so it's, ne I, it's never there that I can't do it. That's not the question. So even when I went to Maninda, the question was not that I can do it or I can't do it. Uh, you know, when you're going in a group of 15 or 20 people, uh, you cannot be the cause of uh, of disrupting their trip. So I couldn't have been the person who suddenly feels unwell or falls unwell and then everybody gets into a dizzy, you know. So, so that was the reason. It was not that whether I could do it or not. So I was very convinced that I can do it. Uh, so, uh, and if anybody else can do it, you know, I mean, I, I see a lot of motivational films. Uh, in fact, one that I posted on my Instagram uh, was the one that uh, made me feel that I can do that trek. Uh, there's this gentleman uh, who doesn't have an arm, both arms and no legs, and he's climbing uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. So if he could do it, why not me? I've got everything that I'm blessed with every uh, possible, uh, you know, physical, uh, asset that I have. So that was, there was never a reason that I wouldn't want, wouldn't be able to do it. But I didn't so, want it to be getting spoiled for anybody else. Uh, with but me. I saw you while you were trekking, you were like, you know, calm and composed and easy and you figured out your own way how to do it. But did you at any given point of time felt that it's tough and you shouldn't have done it? No, it never came into my mind as to that it was tough. But uh, I must confess that, uh, you know, waking up at night, uh, at my age, you need to go to the loo more frequently than the normal and, and freezing cold outside, getting out of that cold and then walking it and then coming back. And, you know, so it was a little tough, but, and then the breathing, you know, but then yeah. uh, it was not something that, uh, made me feel uncomfortable because I was physically fit. And if you're physically fit, uh, and if your mind is, uh, you know, is, is also strong enough to say that you can do it. I don't think there is anything unachievable, really. So, do you tame your mind? I do. I do. I do talking, uh, talk a lot. Uh, even uh, if you would have noticed that when we were uh, walking, I was normally walking uh, very slow and steady. So, I had actually planned my, uh, my uh, trek at that point of time that I would not be comparing myself with anybody else. Uh, you know, so golf has taught me that, you know, that when I'm playing golf, uh, I'm not really competing with anybody else. I'm actually competing with the course and myself. So, uh, so even when I was trekking, it was the, the trek and me. So I had to conquer that trek. It didn't make a difference when, uh, you know, other youngsters were running past, you know, if you remember Varun and Chandani and, uh, you know, they were running around and they were, you know, so I, I it didn't disturb me and I didn't want to do that. Uh, so so I, I was at ease. So I was taming my mind. Yes, I spent a lot of time with my time. You know, so that was also one of the reasons that I wanted to go for that trek so that I could spend more time with myself. Wow. So, um, I mean, people don't know how to stop their mind and how to tame their mind. Would you like to give some techniques how to tame your mind? I, you know, my my mind is equally uh, monkey-like. Uh, but yes, I do a lot of reading. And uh, I have gone through a lot of ups and downs in my life where uh, I used to think I was God's gift to mankind as far as money is concerned because I'd seen so much money. And then we lo I lost a lot of it and then I made it up and things like that. So three years of my life, I stopped working, uh, uh, almost work, stopped working completely in 1998 to 2001. Uh, we used to be, my family business used to be running uh, uh, a GSA of an airline, uh, that time very famous called Modi Lok, which is a, a collaboration with Lufthansa, we were doing very well uh, and then it shut off and when then it shut off, uh, obviously I lost a lot of money and I felt that, uh, I felt cheated uh, that uh, uh, that money had been taken away for no rhyme or reason 
And uh, so I was a little disillusioned and I didn't want to work. And in fact, that was the time when I uh, first got into social work and uh, was connected to an organization called Youth Reach, where we assisted the publishing of certain books, which are phenomenal books. And then I started working with certain organizations. And that is when the spiritual journey really started off for me. And uh, now I do a lot of uh, reading. I uh, listen to a lot of stuff. Uh, I listen to all, all, the, all the gurus, as you may call them, um, all spiritual teachers. And uh, not only limited to Guru Granth Sahib, but Gita to uh, uh, Quran and to everything. So for me, that concept of oneness is very important. And I try and imbibe whatever I learn. So the monkey magic mind continues, but uh, it's a continuous process. Give us some one simple technique of yours, which is the simplest you ever feel that you can tame your mind with. Well, Rajneesh says that, uh, you know, that... Uh, uh, it is very illusionary, whatever you're talking, if you realize that whatever you're talking is, is only between you. You know, your mind is talking, but who is talking? It's you who's talking, you know, whether it's uh, yes or no. You're cooking up all the stories. And it is if you realize that you're the one who's cooking up the stories, then uh, you can also control it. And if you can uh, think about it, how wasteful it is. You know, I mean, it is stupid. So, uh, I do not allow the, the thought of failure. I mean, even when I'm cycling these days, I did 108 kilometers of cycling this morning. And uh, I would not allow the thought of um, failing uh, come into my mind because there have been so many people who've already done this. And if they've done it, why can't I do it? Wow, that is so inviting. So inviting, Vicky. I mean, like, wow. <laughs> my whole world is blasting with that. I'm like, I'm having that. You're the one, you remember, you did that... Stuff on my head in Katma. Uh, in <laughs> yes, I do remember. Wow. I have cards for you. Yeah. So, so I think that's it. You know, in the context of mind, uh, we all know that it's a monkey-like uh, situation, and if we want to control it, we can. Not that I've been able to do it. Let's put it this way. But I do, uh, specifically do not allow the thoughts of uh, failure coming in. In fact, I told my wife. Uh, uh, about a month ago that I would, uh, you know, she should not come with me when I go for the cyclothon. The only reason was logically, you know, as a, as a wife or family, uh, if I'm going to come back, I'm not going to be, uh, uh, when I get off the bicycle after 10 hours of riding, I've, uh, you know, I have, will have stress and strain on my face. And if at that point of time, she says, uh, you're not feeling well, uh, that's not what I want to hear. You know, I just want to hear you're looking good. You're doing fantastic. You're ready to go. Let's do it again tomorrow. You know, but obviously as concern, anybody, I mean, I would do the same thing to anybody who's uh, looking tired, but I don't want to hear that. So I was telling people today morning only that when I'm going to be there, I don't want to meet anybody. I just want to be alone. When I finish off, I want to go into my room and I just want to eat my food, sleep, and then we start again next morning. Yes, that you have been. I remember when I was like stuck in the last and you were like, okay, talk, take one step. Let's go easy. Let's just, do we are just there. And I remember you were like such a motivation for me. And I'm like, everybody's running. Then you were like, what is a hurry? You're just moving. Let's just move. And I think that was so inviting. And I kept talking to you at the pace and, you know, suddenly I was there in um, finishing the track and I'm like, wow, <laughs> amazing. So you I totally... You, you, you were one of the ones who completed the trek completely, you know? Yes, yes. Thank you all. And yeah. when the end. Yes, thank you. So that is actually an invitation. And like when you said, uh, Mickey, that um, can we ask questions around where you had three years of when you felt cheated and when you did social work, how, what motivated you to actually get back to work and start creating <laughs> So, uh, you know, I got into, I was at a, par uh, at a party uh, and uh, this, uh, a friend of mine came at around, I think this was quite late, around 2.33 at night. And she tells me, you know, there is this guru who's come from Hong Kong and he's giving a discourse on Guru Granth Sahib in English. So I said, okay. And I remember his name was uh, Swami Sarupananda, who now heads the Chinmaya mission. So I said, okay, fine. I'll go and see, you know. So I land up and I've always uh, had this uh, uh, funny thought in my mind that, you know, I should always sit in the last row. So he had uh, 
maybe 50 rows in front of him and then there were 20 empty and then there was the Sardar sitting right in the back. You know. And uh, so I started hearing him and uh, then at one day, I don't know, out of the blues, he just called me. You know, I don't know how. He said, you want to have breakfast with me? And since then, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's been uh, a mentor and guide and now he's the head of the Chinmaya Mission. So my wife, you know, so when I stopped working, uh, my wife, uh, after three years, uh, sort of uh, told him that uh, Vicky is not working as hard as he should be working. And, uh, you know, he's in a family business. The kids are growing old. Uh, he should be doing something. Uh, I was playing golf and I uh, became uh, fairly good in golf. My handicap went to almost scratch. Uh, I used to play golf three to four times a week. Uh, and then uh, she complained, not complained, she just said that this is what it is. So he asked me, why are you not working? So I said, why should I work? I mean, I work and then somebody cheats me out of my money. Why should I work? I don't need money. My, there's enough money for my children to be uh, living and then I can live my life. So he, he gave a uh, thought and which, was, which has stayed with me and uh, which was that each one of us is gifted uh, with something or the other. And if you've been gifted with uh, the ability to make money and if you don't want money, then you make money and just distribute it. But it doesn't mean that you don't use your skills. So you must use your skills. And obviously I started working and then my wife started complaining that I work too much. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'm having everything what you have. <laughs> that happened and then I got back to work. And wow. uh, now I, last year I did, uh, I think, 109 flights, international flights uh, in 2019. And wow. Very pleasant change that I've been in uh, at home since uh, March this year and no flights. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You're amazing. So now what brought you, if I may ask, what brought you to this cyclothon and what is the journey here forward to? So, uh, you know, I mean, during that period of time when I was, I told you that I was uh, doing uh, a lot of social work. I got involved in a lot of projects. Uh, so I was uh, also uh, got associated with the Breast Cancer Foundation, which is the Breast Cancer Patients Benefit Foundation and BCPBF. And Dr. Samir Kaul, who heads the oncology in Apollo, uh, Delhi, uh, heads it. And there are other uh, doctors along with him. Uh, and uh, so they have this foundation. So I started contributing at that point of time. This is about 15 years ago. Then about a year ago, uh, a colleague of mine uh, got, uh, you know, had cancer and uh, I said, uh, went to Dr. Samir Paul and he tre he's treating him. And one of those days when I was sitting there, uh, you know, in, in Apollo, I saw uh, uh, a lady with uh, breast cancer uh, in total agony and pain. Uh, her husband and her uh, two sons, uh, I believe in an, uh, just about... Uh, you know, late 20s, early 80s, uh, 30s, reasonably well-to-do well to do people, uh, not something that uh, they were poor. And uh, they just refused to pay, you know, they said that they don't want to get the operation done or surgery done because they don't want to spend money and that the lady should be allowed to die. So this was uh, quite a shocker for me that the Indian women uh, very unfortunately are dependent on men who control the purse and who cannot even get treated for themselves. So I asked, you know, at that point of time, um, you know, I asked uh, Dr. Paul as to what is the amount of money that they normally generate in a year uh, for the foundation and it was about a crore rupee. So I said, okay, let me do something much more uh, uh, bigger so that we can collect about 1.5 to 2 crores from one project. And I just sitting there, I just said, let me do the cycling. Uh, I've never done cycling. Uh, I mean, I thought of different things as to what could I do. I even thought of uh, doing like, say, 800 kilometers or 1,000 kilometers of rowing. But then that was a very impractical situation. So it had to be endurance. It had to be something that I would have done my own self and not dependent on anybody else. Uh, you know, there are a lot of events that uh, come up where uh, uh, you're dependent on a lot of collective effort. In this, it, was, it had to be only mine because it was my decision. Because I wanted to do it. Uh, so, at that point of time, I just told him, okay, let's do lay to Delhi. And uh, it was also 550th birth uh, anniversary of Guru Nanak and I wanted to do that. So, Guru Nanak had gone to lay in one of his uh, journeys. 
So I said, okay, let me track that journey and I'll come down to Manali and then from there I'll go to Dera Baba Nana Kamritsar and then to come to Delhi. So that was the intention of doing about 1400 to 1750 kilometers. But then that got, uh, you know, completely derailed because of pandemic. I couldn't do the, uh, the, uh, the high altitude training. And then from 1400, I first said, okay, let me do 2000 kilometers. Then it went to 2200, then it went to 2400. And then I said, okay, uh, Delhi to Kanyakumari, because that was late to Delhi. Now let me see Delhi to Kanyakumari, and that's 2800 kilometers. So that's wow. how 2800 kilometers came into view. Wow. So you would be uh, cycling all through from Delhi to Kanyakumari? No. So uh, because of the pandemic, there are a lot of restrictions between states. So to avoid that, uh, I've just chosen uh, Rajasthan, uh, also because of the weather. Uh, so uh, I'll only go th in Rajasthan. I'll be starting from Delhi, uh, go to Bikaner, then to Jaisalmer, then to Barmed, uh, Udaipur, uh, Jodhpur, Ajmer, Jaipur, the Delhi. So that's the circuit. And in Barmed area, uh, we'll be holding a cancer detection and an awareness camp uh, for tribal uh, women. Uh, so the intention is to use uh, the, so the doctors will be coming there. Uh, Dr. Call and his team will be coming there for that camp for two days. Uh, and, and that's the intention. And then you would be uh, doing the marathon back. I'll be doing the cycling alone. So I'm doing the cycling alone, except that today morning, you know, while I was cycling, uh, sometimes, you know, this universe has its own uh, unique ways of connecting you to people. I was cycling on that, uh, you know, the the uh, behind the uh, in the that crescent, that uh, Wellington crescent, and I saw this cyclist go in front of me, and he his tire was a little wobbling. So I, when I went, you know, I overtook him. I told him your tire is wobbling, and he knew about it, of course. And after some time, you know, when I was doing the uh, climb on the ridge, he was he just came next to me. And it turns out that he is a gentleman called uh, Vila, Vishal Ahlavat, who is from the army and who's done uh, the record for uh, cycling from Leh to Kanyakumari in 14 uh, days. In 14 days? Wow. 14 days. So when I told him that I'm doing that, he says, I'd like to ride along with you. And then he tells me that his wife uh, has, is a cancer survivor and possibly she would also like to ride with me. So uh, while, while I'm supposed to be doing alone, uh, there may be people who would join uh, either for the whole journey or for part of the journey. Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. And then you ensure that this money goes to the cancer patients and the whole... Uh, so, and so, so, there is a website called Grit for Life. G-R-I-T-F-O-R-L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Uh, that's a website for this event. And on that, there is a donate uh, button, uh, you know, link. Uh, which takes you to the payment uh, gateways and the money goes directly to the Breast Cancer Foundation. Uh, so it goes to BCPBF Cancer Foundation. Uh, we've already uh, got uh, 40 lakhs of rupees have already been donated. Uh, the goal is 1.5 crores and the money that will be uh, is coming uh, will be used for clinical treatments of uh, cancer patients and for holding these cancer detection and awareness camps. Wow, that is so amazing. So guys, if you guys want to donate for this, the link will be provided here on the, under the chat. So you're most welcome to come and donate for this cause where at least that much we can do. You just yeah, so, so the, you know, the intention, the, the, I mean, in a very simplistic manner of how to collect this uh, 1.5 crores is I'm doing 2,800 kilometers. Uh, so I need 2,800 people to just come and donate 5,000 rupees each. So it is, uh, you know, for every kilometer you sponsor, uh, you pay, you sponsor by giving 5,000 rupees. Uh, and that, uh, you know, 5,000 rupees is, you know, most of the people, that, you know, that I would probably be uh, interconnecting with or my friends and relationships and business relationships. It's really uh, just a drop in the uh, ocean, but then that becomes a very big ocean for the cancer patients. So, uh, yes, uh, anybody and anybody, everybody can uh, contribute a minimum of 5,000. Uh, and then, of course, people are contributing in multiples. Uh, some have contributed uh, 20 kilometers, some, some are contributing 100 kilometers, and that's how it's growing. Wow, that is amazing. 
but then uh, having said that then if this is one then i mean it, it's going on sorry but i said if this is one and this is what you do then next is is next target already on like well, you you know uh, uh, i mean it is on because uh, so the thought the earlier thought was to actually call it uh, call this event as grit at 64 so because i was turning 64 so so that would have been a singular event but then uh, we decided to actually call it grit for life so that this event then becomes an annual event or uh, so uh, somebody who is uh, connected to the cause of grit for life or to cancer patients could come forward and be a part of the grit for life program uh, wow. i am hoping to do another ride or do another ultra endurance uh, event uh when i turn 65 uh this is very important this year is very important for me like i told you because this is the 550th birth anniversary of guru nanak so while i start on the 18th of november which is my birthday i am trying to you know the the number of days i earlier thought was 14 days but today uh, i was discussing it with my um, elder brother and i may cut it down from 14 to 13 days so that i can be back in delhi on the 30th of november which happens to be uh, guru nanak's birthday and uh, so that will be the culmination of 550th uh, birth anniversary so that would mean that i'll have to adjust uh, something like 200 kilometers in the 13 days so i'll probably do that wow and, and so next wow. next event will be there for sure it will be there next year awesome so um, what would you like to say to people like who don't have that courage and like you know give up on life very easy and it's like you know um what what would you really like to say about it because uh, the courage the adventure in you is so inviting so what do you know about life no i mean i you know i i it's not that i have never been in the down in the dumps in the context of uh, you know any any uh, business world uh there are ups and downs so you go through them but uh, in the context of my personal life or anybody's personal life i'd say that you are a very important soul you are a very important person you have been given everything uh, uh, possible and there is this uh, you know i've met these two people uh, in the last 5 uh, or 6 weeks uh, related to grid for life and uh, they've been guiding me once in a while because when my mind is also going hey why when i'm focusing more on the uh, money donation they keep telling me that uh, you know once you have uh, pure uh, intentions for the good of uh, others then the universal forces will work together and make sure that you are successful so in the context of anybody who's in the dumps i can only say that you know there are your your misery your pain your uh, challenges seem may seem to be very overwhelming but you really don't know what is happening in the uh, lives of other people and and so do not uh, get uh, over consumed by your own uh, uh, problems uh, there are uh, much bigger issues that are happening around the world i mean like i'm telling you this woman that i saw she was uh, completely helpless uh, her husband and the kids not paying she wouldn't have had the money she would probably have been she probably be dead by now uh, but there's nothing that uh, she could do and uh, so we are in much much better situations to that extent and and my biggest driver has been that if uh, aradhana can do it why can't i simple <laughs> i mean I'm, i'm you know and 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 i do see a lot of motivational uh, films including when I'm, you know on this cycling i was trying to see so i did actually go on to uh, uh, youtube and uh, researched uh, you know people who have won paralympic uh, uh, gold medals in uh, in cycling and uh, and the way they do it uh, i mean i have both legs both arms i have everything fit i mean I'm, god's been very kind uh, to me so why can't we do it so each one of us probably just needs to look at it in the manner and feel reassured that i'm not alone there is an uh, there is a, a universal force that is going to be with me and if i make the effort i will be successful so if you if you just want to be uh, looking back as uh, you know you're not alone let's put it this way and uh, if you're not alone then uh, things will happen but you need to move you need to do things uh, it, it's not that something will happen without you making the effort right 
So, do you have a regime? How you follow it, or is it that you are um, for my cycling for this this yeah. this? Well, uh, the <laughs> I am going through a biggest uh, change of my uh, life in the context of. Uh, so I do allow you know uh, about four to five hours of cycling. I used to do five days a week. Uh, now I'm doing three days a week because I've been advised to do now uh, bring it down. Uh, other than that, uh, I have a two-hour uh, physiotherapy session uh, three times a week. I have a trainer coming, uh, physical uh, strength training uh, happening uh, three times a week. And I'm doing uh, a younger yoga classes uh, twice in a week. So that's, uh, that's one part of it. But beyond that, you know, the biggest challenge that I'm facing right now is the amount of food that I'm being made to eat. Because uh, I'm burning, I mean, the day I ride, I'm burning something like... Uh, 3,000 to 4,000 calories or rather on those 14 days when I'll be riding, I'll be burning close to 5,000 to 6,000 calories. So I am wow. eating all that and there's so much food going inside me and that is obviously the body is not used to it. And it, it, you know, that's one part of it. And the other part of it is uh, water. You know, I'm uh, uh, losing about a liter of water every hour. And uh, so if I'm on the... Uh, you know, if I'm going to be on the bicycle for seven, eight hours, uh, I'll be losing almost seven to eight liters of water. So I have to consume all that. And so that that is, you know, so I'm getting uh, used to that. And uh, the, this time frame of the last five, six months has done me well. And uh, so so I'm, uh, you know, that's the regime that I follow these days. And Steve, then of course, the you need training. You need uh, training. Sorry? I said for everything you require training, right? Absolutely. You know, there was a, I, I remember uh, uh, there was a, uh, an article that I read which said that, uh, you know, there was this person who, who, was, uh, who saw uh, an archer doing something uh, great. And uh, so every time he did, uh, uh, you know, he shot his arrow bullseye, and the other guy said, you know, it's, it's a matter of training. So it is a matter of training because if I train, I would, it's not necessary that I'll be the best of the best, but I will know how to do it. And if I want to be the best of the best, then I can, but it will require a lot of dedication and uh, commitment to it. So you mean what seems very glamorous isn't glamorous. It requires a lot of hard work and it is, obviously. I mean, if you look at it, uh, I can only tell you, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, for this, um, uh, for Grid for Life, uh, they wanted to shoot and uh, shoot a film. And I had to do that for seven hours, you know, because he would make me say something, then he'd say no. Again, another one, then I would do that. So that day I learned that these actors don't take have it easy. I mean, just because they have a glamorous world, they need to work very hard. You know, it's, it's not something easy. For seven hours, I was, and I was a zombie by the end of the day. And I said, I'm so tired. I it would have been easier to go on a seven-hour bicycle ride rather than uh, do this, you know. So, wow. yes, of course, uh, I think uh, everything is is, uh, is tenuous. It takes time, it takes commitment, and it takes, uh, uh, I mean, if you want to excel in it, then obviously the commitment to excel has to be there. So, is it the commitment to the stuff or commitment to yourself? It is, sorry, what did you say? I said, is it commitment to things or is it commitment to yourself? No, so if you're driven by a materialistic world, it's into the things. But uh, I think that is uh, not the real, uh, I mean, it, for me, it is the commitment to myself. Uh, everything else will follow. You know, like I said, uh, these uh, two wonderful ladies that I've met have been telling me that uh, you do what you're supposed to be doing. Everything else will follow it. I mean, why are you wasting time and thinking about it? And that is what our scriptures also say. But, you know, you sometimes uh, lose focus and then you need to come back. So, you need somebody to nudge you and tell you about it. And that's where the wavering mind comes in. You know? So, uh, so I think it's a commitment to one's own self. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I always say that how you follow the joy of anything and everything else follows too. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I, mean uh, I mean, if you're not committed to what you're doing, then you might as well not do it. It doesn't make sense to do it half-heartedly. And if you're driven with the with the money, then I am uh, an example where I've seen a huge amount of wealth uh, or money generation, and then I've seen a huge amount of month uh, money just getting lost. So, so 
uh, uh, I mean, uh, all I can say is that the money that you've been able to give to somebody uh, was yours. And whatever you've got uh, in your bank or anything, you're just a custodian. You don't know when it's going to go. So <laughs> be, generous, be generous, share it with people. And, uh, and, uh, and, and for sure, uh, uh, once you're generous, uh, you get it many fold back. Uh, it comes back to you in uh, multiple ways. And uh, in, uh, you know. So I believe in Guru Nanaji's um, statement, which I have always lived with is Sab Tera, Sab Tera, Sab Tera. So and, I, and I always look for somebody. I'm like, can I meet somebody from Guru Nanaji's family ever? <laughs> and I just ask, and like, you know, you're there in my life. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't want to get into the spiritual aspect of it. Yeah. Because uh, that's uh, it's something very personal for people. But the fact still remains that whatever you're doing, there has to be some meaning to it, and it uh, cannot be it cannot be just money driven. And if it is money driven, then it is very shallow, and you don't know when it's going to go off. So if you have a, a bigger meaning to it, and which is related to your life or the quality of life, or to give to somebody else, I think that is something which would be. Uh, but here I would say like a lot of people would say because you have and you've created money, you have it so you can talk about giving it to others. But what we don't even have a day-to-day -day need money, how do we be? To that I can only say, you know, there, uh, there is this uh, book, I don't have it in front of me right now, that I've shown you the cover. It's a book called If I Were Rain, which is uh, published by an organization called Youth Reach. And uh, it's a lovely book. Uh, this 11-year-old girl, uh, you know, world-famous photographers were commissioned and it's very well compiled. It's a coffee table book. And uh, I spon I, I'm one of the sponsors for publishing that book. Uh, and that book is called If I Were Rain because this young girl, 11 year old girl who didn't have food or money, you know, had no food, no clothes. Uh, and she was asked as to what would you like to become? And she said that I'd like to become rain so that I can take water to people who don't have water to drink and give shower my love. So here is a person who didn't have, water, uh, you know, clothes, didn't have uh, money didn't have food, but she still had love to share. So, so that is, I mean, she was very rich. Uh, I can give you another example uh, about uh, two or three weeks ago, you know, on the circuit that I uh, ride, uh, I ride around uh, the ridge. And when you come down from the ridge uh, to Chanakya Puri, uh, there is a place called the Monkey Farm. There is that, you know, next to Buddha Janti Park. And there people come and buy bananas and, and put them, you know, offer them to the monkeys over there. And there is this lady over there, and I uh, took a short video and I posted it in my Instagram. Her name is Manorma. I stopped there and I wanted to eat bananas, and I <clears throat> ate, uh, took two bananas from her and then uh, packed up another two. And then uh, she asked me, She would come here every day. So I told her that I'm collecting money. And imagine, uh, and uh, she earns about 120 to 150 rupees uh, a day. And she said, no, don't give me this money. Keep this 20 rupees as a part of my contribution to the cancer. Wow. So wow. that it is more in your heart and your uh, desire to give. Uh, you all have something to give. It's not necessarily money. Uh, we can give love. We can give a lot of, uh, you know, help to people in different ways. Uh, so that's not necessarily. Uh, and I've been very fortunate. Like you said, I've been very fortunate and privileged that, uh, I have almost anything and everything, really. I'm fairly rich. I'm, I, when I say rich, I'm not talking about only monetarily, but in every aspect of my life. Emotionally, wow. with my family, I'm very fortunate with my family. You know, Thank you. That's so amazing. That's what I can say. So here is a, a girl who didn't have food or uh, money, didn't have clothes. She was ready to give her love to people. Here is a lady who ha earns 120 rupees in a day. Uh, selling bananas since morning till evening and she says I don't want to take 20 rupees from you because this is my contribution to cancer patients. So I don't think um, uh, having money or not having money is the criteria for being uh, generous with whatever you have. And it's so beautiful. Thanks for sharing with us. So and um, what would you like to say because Be The Change page and as Be The Change page I invite everybody to actually have to have the courage like you and to follow their heart and knowing and that's where that invitation is for all of them to be come and show up as who they are 
what would you like to say around it? No, so I'm, I'm not sure whether I, I can uh, uh, say that I'm a very courageous person, but there is this lady that I'd met in, uh, in Israel who, who is into what she calls as chance management. And uh, so she spent a day with me trying to analyze and assess me as to what, you know, like, like you're saying, I do so many things and every two, three years I'm doing something different. So she calls me a gypsy. So she said, you're a gypsy because uh, you tend to be wanting to do something new. So all I can say is that this life is, uh, is very beautiful. It gives us great opportunities. And these opportunities will come in front of us. We just need to grab them and we need to take the first step. And as far as courage or the, the uh, you know, going for doing things with your heart, or what your heart wants, it's something that you have to liberate yourself from. It's not very easy if you're caught up with, the, with your work or with your whatever commitments that you made. Uh, I don't think people tend to give themselves uh, the most important uh, position. People don't think that they are important and uh, they tend to give uh, a lot of time and, and uh, they, they're generous with others. They want to do things for their family. They want to do things for others and they don't uh, sort of put themselves on top of the pedestal. I think if you can do that and if you can start loving yourself and then you automatically will do what you want to do and uh, then things will fall in place and then you have to make the effort that's all wow. that is amazing and never give up never give in never quit what uh, would you do? because if you quit i mean if you don't want to do it don't do it right from the beginning but uh, don't do it's not that you are not doing it because you're incapable of doing it. you are capable of doing it but you don't want to do it that's different but not that you get a thought in my mind that I'm not going to be able to do it and that's why I won't do it. Wow. So that's all I can say. Thank you. That was such a contributive session with you. And what else can everybody do? And I think you can follow Vicky on Instagram. He's pretty active on it. And he can, you can share his uh, page and you can invite more people to come and contribute to this course. Yeah. 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 It's not about the money. It's about the intention that you have. And so good, news, uh, good news about my Insta page is I don't know how and because I'm uh, I am a little shocked myself and I'm overwhelmed with it but uh, on one of the posts that I put uh, today morning uh, I saw a little while ago before uh, I joined uh, this that there was something close to 31,000 views so wow. from, uh, wow. <laughs> uh, four, weeks ago, four weeks ago I was not on Instagram and I mean the only people who were in the Instagram who were following me were my my immediate family, so I had 12 followers. I never had a Facebook account. I just I was ready to open a Facebook account about uh, 10 days ago. So uh -huh. I've been uh, invisible on social media. I don't never like clicking pictures. But with that background, I think uh, I'm hoping that uh, the message will go across. I'm hoping that uh, youngsters or people will uh, want to follow, come into into this, uh, you know, and support uh, uh, Grid for Life. Uh, as uh, it is going to impact a lot of uh, lives. And uh, so my effort will continue. I'm going to do it. I've done 8,000 kilometers of cycling training and I'm therefore very confident of being able to make this journey. I'm having all of it, Vicky, for sure. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for being here. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you for and giving me the opportunity to be on your show. Yes, I, how did I get so lucky to have you as on you, my show? You got lucky or I got lucky. But thank you. <laughs> that's a, that's a debatable so. <laughs> but thank you thank you so much and i'm sure you opened so much for so many people and uh i mean what will it take for the world to have more people like you and so, just, all yeah. I'm saying, so please tell all your all your viewers and all your followers and every place that it goes to uh please contribute whatever you can and with folded hands i'm requesting please contribute uh generously to grid for life it is for the lives of cancer patients and it is going directly into the accounts of uh, Breast Cancer Patients Benefit Foundation. And I can assure you that uh, uh, a majority, I mean, you know, there is, there'll be a certain amount, but at least 90 to 95% of that money would actually be used for uh, uh, clinical treatments and for, uh, for uh, cancer awareness and detection camps. Yes. So don't Thank and what else would you like to say? I mean, That's it. Please generate and make sure that I 
you know i mean the, it'll be the happiest moment for me that on 18th of november when i ride with when i get to know that there's 1 lakh 50 the 1 crore 50 lakhs in the bank of breast cancer foundation because then i will ride with victory you know uh, so and, and just give me that privilege and give me that honor that's all i can say thank you thank you, you will i'm sure you will i mean as what the girl says that you just follow and the things will follow and always trust that you follow you doing with that intention of the, the joy you are actually i really love the joy you're doing it with the intensity you are preparing it with is like oh my god i think i have learned I have so much i'm really enjoying it yes i can see it and i can sense it it's from the pure joy it's not like i have to do it it's like wow i'm doing it and looking forward to it it's like a little child who's so excited to do it and then i think the whole universe supports when you have that intention and i'm sure it will yes thank you so much all the best and we'll keep a track on you for that for sure and everybody here please thank you for showing up everybody who please share this video please share it on your pages and make it as popular as you can and uh, what will it take for all of you to contribute and ask people to contribute for this greater cause and i'll be really really thankful to you and thank you my team everybody sonali shivangi umesh thank you for showing up and my whole supporting team thank you thank you for this wouldn't have been possible without you all and thank you vicky's team thank you vicky thank you, thank you universe <laughs> and we look for next week for next person next show let's see who shows up and what shows up thank sure. you vicky bye 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 everyone thank you